Welcome to the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Hello everyone, this is Jarvis S. Scott with What's Happening Birmingham. Today I got the honor and pleasure with Ms. Carla V. Morton. She is running for Jefferson County Circuit Court Judge, Place 23, May 24, 2022 election. Carla, thanks for coming on today. Thank you so much, Jarvis, for having me. Great, great, great. Another, another one of my continuing series interviewing all the candidates that's running for office this upcoming May 24th, 2022 election. So the first thing we'll start with, because you've been busy. You've yes. been all over the place running. Oh, <laughs> running and stuff. So I know that this is going to be the easiest question that you're going to get first off is, why are you running for judge? I'm running for judge because I believe that there's a lack of family-centered solutions in domestic relations to help families as they transition from a divorce to a new normal. Okay, so what, if you're elected, what type of cases are you going to be hearing? Like, walk me inside domestic relations court. Okay, domestic relations court is housed in downtown Birmingham. It's the Jefferson County Division of Domestic Relations. Domestic relations deals with divorce, but people are not familiar with the fact that oftentimes people who are not married can also petition in the court when it comes to issues of custody. So what you're going to have is custody matters in there, child support matters, visitation, separation of properties, retirement, and assets as it relates to divorces. Okay, so in your legal career so far, what's been some of the hardest cases you worked on? The hardest cases that I've worked on are family matters cases. I've practiced in family court, juvenile court, downtown on 2nd Avenue. Those cases are closely related mm -hmm. to domestic relations court as well. Many of the cases in family court can be appealed to domestic relations over here in Jefferson County, and you basically work the same kind of cases. Anytime you're dealing with cases that deals with family dynamics, families and children, those are difficult cases when you see families are separating. What you want to try to do as a practicing attorney is make sure that they have the services that they need, they have the information that they need, they are knowledgeable about what they're doing because oftentimes people make decisions from hurt feelings. They mm -hmm. come into the court angry about an incident. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it could be one incident or it could be accumulation of incidents <laughs> and now you have reached your, your end. What we would like to do as practicing attorneys in domestic relations is navigate people through the process of disagreements to help them understand what their rights are, what their legal uh, standing is as, as parents. Uh, oftentimes, men come into court and don't know that they have equal rights. Yeah, that was my next question I was going to ask you in just minutes, Roger. What can men expect? Because I've heard conversations from men feel like when they go into domestic relations with court, they feel like they have already lost before yes. they even come in the courtroom. Yes, what men can expect out of my courtroom is equal justice under the law. My job is to ensure that all parties, facts, and information are being heard in a fair and equitable manner. Mm -hmm. As a judge, you hear the facts that come before you that are presented by the attorneys. Mm -hmm. And the attorneys are coming in uh, advocating for their clients. Basically, they're representing the wife or the husband. And each party is seeking something from uh, the separation or seeking something from the identification of parenthood, meaning a DNA test or a notification of, that you are the father uh, of that child. And then you having to make a decision about child support, visitation, and things such as that. Uh, I want people to know that when you come before my court, mm -hmm. you're going to have a judge that is knowledgeable. You're going to have a judge that is compassionate, and you're going to have a judge that understands that equal justice of law is is the best interest of the child. Uh, that's the subject of the case. Okay, so I was on. I think I heard the shout out Chris Coleman, the V ninety four on the think tank when he was on. You talked about how long the actual that whole process lasts typically. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can last anywhere from 16 to 18 months. Okay. That is what we would call a normal transition. Okay. Oftentimes, they can take longer. Some people mm -hmm. be in court for four or five years. And oftentimes, people are in court for that length of period of time because the disagreements are severe and they cannot solve the problems. And oftentimes, people forget that marriages are like a business. Mm -hmm. You're breaking up a business. You're breaking up a contract. You're breaking up property. And so, you're not easily... Uh, come to a solution that easy when it comes down to who's going to get the house, 
who's going to get the right. car, who's going to get the retirement. Those things, unfortunately, take a little longer to settle than it would just a typical uncontested divorce or divorce with people who may not have shared uh, marital property. So, when you get in this position, you're going to make a whole lot of hard decisions. Mm -hmm. What, you know, because one thing, this is one of my favorite questions I like to ask everybody that's running for all these positions. What are some of the hardest decisions you've made in your life so far? One, one of the hardest decisions that I've made in my career True, okay. has been based upon advocating for individuals who are losing their children. Okay. Um, I am a practicing attorney in family law, which is, again deals with family matters. And my, some of the hardest cases I've had to do is termination of parental rights. Okay. When individuals are losing custody of their children okay. permanently. And so advocating with them, advocating for them can be very difficult because the issues that they have can be drug addicted issues, can be mental health issues, or it could just be a lack of concern. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, we fail to realize that some people that have children really don't want them. And so sometimes people that have children may not be able to afford them. And then sometimes life situations get in, 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 into play where they are either addicted to drugs or something to that effect. And then things that they cannot concern, I'm sorry, control mental health. And so oftentimes mm -hmm. people that go through those situations are suffering in a manner where they cannot prepare or take care for the, take care of their children. And so unfortunately, parental rights are terminated in Jefferson mm -hmm. County and across the state of Alabama. And those are the most toughest cases to work. Okay, well, let, let's do a uh, next range of questions I want to ask. Let's connect the dots. Like, okay. where did you grow up? You know, your cousins, where you went to elementary school, middle school, high school, all those yeah, type of Let's ways. connect the dots. Uh -huh. Well, I grew up in Titusville, Lovins Village Projects area. I went to Center Street Elementary. From there, I went to Washington Elementary. From Washington Elementary, I went to Parker High School. Shout out to the Thunder. <laughs> okay. And then from Parker High School, I went to Miles for a period of time. From Miles, I went to Faulkner University. From Oh, and let me put in there, I went to Jeff State Community College. Okay. And I always forget about Jeff State for some reason. Okay. But yeah, yeah. I went to Jeff State Community College. There is where I got my paralegal certification. Uh -huh. And from there, I went on to Faulkner University. And then from Faulkner University, I went to Birmingham School. Law. I passed the bar in April 28th of 2007, uh, and from there I started my business on May the 5th, the Board Law Firm LLC. Okay, so let's talk about you've got a lot of endorsements yes. so far. You know, I know you've probably seen previous segment or <laughs> previous client, Mr. Fuller. But you actually got the endorsement of Judge Chappelle, the current sitting judge, right? Yes, I have the honor of having Judge Agnes Chappelle's uh, endorsement for her seat. Uh, Agnes Chappelle and I, I'm sorry, Judge Agnes Chappelle and I have been friends for over 20 years. She has been my mentor even while I was in college, in my undergrad years. And she has helped me navigate uh, me through the process of going to law school and also helping me open my business and helping me get cases. Okay. I was an indigent defense attorney as well. I serve as an indigent defense attorney to people who cannot afford to, to hire an attorney. And so we, I do that in municipal court, in family court, and in criminal court. And I've also been on the federal indigent defense board, uh, a list of attorneys that, that work in federal court. So I've worked in municipal court, state court, and federal court across the state of Alabama. Um, so having her endorsement is very important to me mm -hmm. because she has seen my development, she has seen my growth, she's seen my determination, and she's seen my tenacity mm -hmm. when it comes to representation of my clients and the things that are important to me. Okay, I want to go back to another connect dots. Where your church? What church you go to? <laughs> I'm doing all these important things, but we got to connect this. Okay. okay. I attend New Rising Star okay. Church over out in East Lake. I've been a member of New Rising Star now about over 25 years. Um, and I started out with uh, Tommy Chappelle. Mm -hmm. I was the father to Judge Chappelle. And now my current pastor is Pastor Thomas Beavers, who is the son of Judge Chappelle. So I, uh, the Chappelle family and the Beavers family have been a part of my life for a very long time, and I'm honored to still be a member of that church. Okay, so, you know, I guess it comes out of the most important question. Why should voters choose you okay. on May 24th? And 
Uh, any other candidate? Why should they choose you? I believe that voters should choose Carla, choose me, Carla V. Morton, because I am a product of the community. I believe in my community. I am skilled. I am qualified. I have done over 100 cases dealing with domestic relations and family matters in Jefferson County and in federal court. When people say, what do you mean about family matters? What I mean is any case that deals with a family member or anyone a member of our community. Oftentimes we think of domestic relations as just a single problem uh, between divorcees that are going through and fail to realize that those cases also deal with aunts, uncles, grandparents, next door neighbors, and school uh, children, friendships as well. When we look at how our society are, is impacted by domestic relations, you want somebody who has a broad span of experience, someone who has done those areas of work, criminal, civil, federal, state, probate, who understands the separation of large assets, who understands the separation of contract negotiations, to understand the need for visitation, understand the need for equal treatment under the law, and understand that families are exhausted. Families are exhausted financially and they are exhausted emotionally. So you need someone who has the compassion for that. You need someone who has the integrity for that, and you need someone who has the courage. And oftentimes people say, well, what do you mean about having courage in domestic relations? Courage is making the decision based on the law uh -huh. and not legislating from the bench. Uh -huh. It is not my personal opinion that you want. You want my professional opinion and you want my legal experience to apply to your case. You don't want someone who this is a uh, popularity contest. You want uh -huh. someone that's about purpose. And my purpose is my community. My purpose is about the family, and my purpose is protecting the law. Okay, this last easy question. <laughs> How can somebody hear more about your campaign? You can hear more about my campaign from going on Facebook. We have a Facebook campaign page. It's Carla B. Morton for Judge. I am also on Facebook, and my, that is Carla Morton. You can also go to the website, which is www.carlavmortonforjudge.com. There you will find links that will allow you the ability to support the campaign and also to get active with the campaign. We also ask people to let us know if you're having events in your area that you would like me to candidate to come out and do meet and greets. I'm willing to come out and talk to anyone and speak to anyone about my platform and what I would like to do. The reason that I do that is I believe that people need to be knowledgeable about who they're voting for. They need to have access to ask questions to who they're voting for. So I give out my number. And my number for contact is area code 205-267-2473. You can call me and ask me a question if you're unsure about the subject matter or you want to know the difference between me and the other candidate. You have the right to give me a call because if you're going out and choosing, taking your time to vote for someone, you need to have the confidence in the person that you're voting for. All right, I think people are going to call you. I think yes. you're the first candidate. <laughs> <laughs> you're the about that cell phone, though. So I think they're going to call you. Yes. Carl, oh, thank you for coming on today. Uh, I would say, I've seen your signs. So if you see the red, you see them signs around town in Jefferson County, everybody. Yes. So thank you for coming on. Wish you thank best you. of luck on your campaign. A few more weeks, everybody. Um, you know, May 24, 2022 is right around the corner. Please go out and vote because, like I said, at some point in your life or somebody you know is going to come before a judge. Yeah. So, that being said, thank you all for watching this video. Please check out what's happening at Birmingham.com for more interviews. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And don't forget to catch the, the audio version of this on Apple Podcasts. So, thank you all again and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the What's Happening Birmingham video podcast. Please check out our website app or subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos today.